Hi, this is Ollie Hilly of chartofthemonth.com on the 10th of June 2014 and I'm going to be talking you through a short coffee trade I took and that I am still in. Let's have a look. First of all, please read the disclaimer, pause and read, and if you don't agree, please discontinue watching, as it says in bold at the bottom. Okay, on to chart of the month 2014, short coffee. You might remember that I sent out an email on the 16th of May saying that I was short coffee. So that's uh, almost a month ago. I'm still short, and it's currently my most profitable trade of the year, and I want to talk you through it. Okay, here's the first part of the move, and this is a daily chart going right back to October 2013. You may not be able to read that, so I'll just show you October 2013. First thing to notice, we've got a beautiful base here, very small candles, prices within a very tight band, and it stays in that base until it breaks out here on the 31st of January. So it broke out of that base, and that um, that price there, that line is exactly 126.24, and it rose up to the peak right up here in the right hand corner was 219 on the 23rd of April, which is a 58% move, which is the largest three month up move in the history of coffee. So a colossal, insanely massive move, 58% in under three months. It really is just eye-popping and colossal. Okay, let's just talk about what drives commodity prices. Well, obviously, commodities are based, or commodity prices are based on supply and demand. In this, in this example, the supply of coffee and the demand for coffee. We all understand basic supply and demand. Then, of course, momentum. The trend is your friend. So once it starts trending, people jump on because it's a trend. Of course, is the additional point, or initial initial driver, is investor belief, i.e., human psychology, that gets involved. And then, of course, as a almost as a subset of human psychology, is fear and greed. And number five, jumping on the bandwagon. So this is sort of linked to the trend, but it's also about seeing the momentum, seeing the trend, seeing everybody else doing it, hearing about it, and then jumping on the bandwagon. And for those of you who are Generation Y and beyond, you'll know this is FOMO, the fear of missing out. So these are all things that go through a trader's mind, and even the big the traders trading multiple millions of dollars and um, head of hedge funds, etc. They're just human beings, and they react in much the same way that everybody else does. And let's have a look at these. Number one, supply and demand is rational. Number two, momentum is somewhat rational. Numbers three, four, and five is where it starts getting irrational. And of course, when you start getting into the irrational, that's when prices can overshoot, both to the upside and the downside. So I am always looking for opportunities where there is an overshoot in price and where price is overdone. So um, the biggest move in coffee in all time over a three month period immediately suggests to me that prices are overdone. Okay, so here's the same chart as before, but this is the, well, actually this is the full chart showing the peak that we identified before up in here at 219. And here's the base that we identified before. So here's the breakout of the base, goes up, comes down, goes up, forms a new peak, and then right through to today, it's come off. And obviously this is, you know, it's clearly showing an, an overshoot. And we'll talk about uh, how we, how we uh, will trade this in a sec. Um, but when you've had such a massive move, at some point in time, you don't know when, of course, you, at some point in time, there's going to be a fall. And the other thing I want to show while I'm on this chart, you see I've drawn in another line. I'm quite happy um, that we've now broken down below the previous support um, that happened last night or last night for me or depending on where you are in the world last session um, and now we're currently below we may come up and test that again and then come down let's see let's see what happens and you can see 
um, not only is it one point there, but one, two, three, four, had four days of attempting to break down before finally in the last session it did break down. So that to me is good, a good sign. Let's, let's, let's keep going. So now we come to the million dollar question. How do we pick the price turn when we've seen something that is either shot, overshot in value or undershot in value, so it's either screamed higher or screamed lower and it looks unreasonable and we think it's driven by fear and greed and momentum and human psychology etc. It's no longer in the realm of supply and demand. How do we pick the price turn? Well, let's be honest. If it was easy, we'd all be billionaires within 10 years. This is something that traders all over the world are trying to figure out on a daily basis when are the price turns but we can definitely give ourselves the opportunity to take low risk trades and that's the key low risk trades soon after so if we get it wrong we have a small we take a small loss and if we get it right then we ride the ride the profit down that's the key so here's how I found my short coffee entry on the 15th of May at the price level of 194.84 Okay, so here I've run a simple 120 hour moving average. This is on an hourly chart. So we've got an hourly chart with 120 simple moving average on it. And that's the red line you can see. And so this is the peak. This is the 219 peak we've already identified a couple of times. I've also identified the support resistance line. Now I didn't take this trade until up in here. But by this time, of course, we've got a support resistance line with multiple touches all at or around the same level showing some support from above and resistance from below. Also, interestingly, that support resistance line is bang on 200.00, which is a psychological level. Round numbers are always psychological levels and do in and of themselves without anything else provide support and resistance. There are some other reasons I took this trade. This I don't have time to go into all of them in this video. Um, I also look at momentum. I look at lots of different things. Okay. Once I've entered the position, what then? Well, firstly, as you know, I'm a trend trader. Therefore, I must hold my position as it continues lower. Now, as you can see from this little snapshot of the chart, again, um, the one hour chart, now is not the optimal time to enter so I'm not this is I'm not calling a trade I never do I'm not saying this is the right time to enter but because I'm already short I must hold my position because that's how trend traders make money they hold their positions cut the losses quickly let their winners run incidentally I have been trying to add to my position but I haven't been able to find another low risk entry point since I entered the trade. So I've stuck with my initial position, have tried a number of times to try and find low risk entry points because I'm only interested in low risk entry points and I haven't been able to find one. So as you can see here in the chart, just even just using this 120 moving average as a guide, price has pulled up close to it a few times never touched it again and now of course um, with last night's price action breaking cleanly down below we're a long way from it so I, I actually expect there to be some pullback to the moving average at some stage obviously I hope not too soon but it, it could even happen in the next session um, in which case I'll still stay short until it looks like it's breaking up strongly in the opposite direction against me okay what else am I looking at well I'm always looking for opportunities where there's uh, price has overshot one way or the other and feeder cattle is one that I'm looking at the August 2014 contract specifically price has gone up 29% in the last nine months which is huge now we've just seen coffee at 58% in a few months well that's just insanely huge but don't be thinking 29% well that's not much because 29% in nine months in a commodity is actually huge and you'll see in the chart in a minute uh, price will come down will definitely revert to the mean eventually and supply and demand will take over again and also of course there may not be a low risk entry just because price comes down doesn't mean that we automatically just jump in and sell it we wait for a low risk entry so let's have a look at the chart so here we go, right from August 2013, well, pretty much starts in September actually, the prices you can see, 
and you know I look at this and I'm actually itching to sell it but of course I can't because it's an uptrend and actually as a trend trader I should probably be going long but to me it looks like and feels like we've gone well past supply and demand territory now we're in momentum psychology um, etc and I'm waiting for this to reverse at which time I'll be looking for a low risk entry happy trading look out for the next chart of the month in July also look out for a new program that I'll be talking about in the next week take care out there